Hey everybody, hope you're all doing alright out there. So, motorcycle brakes and specifically ABS. I'm sure you know how ABS kind of works, but do you know exactly how ABS works? Well, by the end of this video, you will know. Okay, so first things first, if you don't know exactly how motorcycle brakes work, then I have this video up here, which explains that, and I suggest you watch that first, because that explains a normal system. I will cover the basics though. So you have a reservoir for your brake fluid, and that's called the master cylinder, but the underneath there is a piston, and you pulling the lever presses the piston, which pushes some of this fluid down your brake line. And what happens then is the fluid pumps inside the brake caliper, pushes the pistons inside out, which in turn pushes your brake pads up against the brake disc. On a non-ABS bike like this, if I pull that brake lever too hard, the front wheel will lock, and that's where ABS comes in, anti-lock brakes. The way you can recognize a bike with anti-lock brakes is that ring. You see this dotted ring that goes around the brake disc? That is the pickup for the sensor and you can see the sensor right there. That sensor is basically sensing the metal disc with the holes in it and it can tell whether the wheel's starting to lock up or not. And then that goes to a hydraulic control unit and that's what I'm gonna explain now. So that's how the brakes kind of work and you know there's a control unit in there somewhere doing something, but how exactly does it work? So, as I mentioned previously, on a bike without an ABS system, you wouldn't have any of this above stuff here. It'd just be a straight line master cylinder, Brake fluid comes down here, goes to your brake caliper, and that's what applies the brakes. Now know that the fluid actually sits about the same sort of place. It doesn't shoot down here at some great speed. It's just you're reducing the volume space inside the brake line, and that's what's putting pressure on the fluid and pushing it down and applying the pressure of the brake pads onto your discs to give you actual braking. And that's why if you have an air bubble or something in here, you get a spongy feel because it compresses it. As I said at the beginning, watch that first video about most cycle basic brake systems. And obviously with this type of system, you yank that really hard, it's going to lock the front wheel and you might well come off. So we have ABS to stop that happening. So this is what the added on part of an ABS system is. This is a single channel system. So it's just going to affect the front wheel or whatever wheel this is connected to. If it was dual channel, that means it does the front and the rear. It's basically the same thing times two. The actual unit itself in the middle of the bike just looks like a steel cube with some brass fittings coming out the side of it. So this is a bike with ABS. We have the sensor on the brake disc, we have an ECU, which is basically the brain of the bike, and that's gonna be taking measurements from that sensor. It also has a motor inside the, uh, the control unit of the hydraulics, which can add pressure with this piston, which we'll get into in a minute, it'll make perfect sense. I just wanna be completely clear that this layout isn't actually what's inside that control unit block, but it is a simplified version, so it's easier to explain how it works. Okay, so just so we're clear, master cylinder, brake disc. These are brake lines. These are valves. This is a little sprung reservoir, that's a spring. We have a little piston here, motor, ECU, right, okay, so, and this is a check valve. That means that fluid can flow this way against it, but it can't go back that way. And that's very important, you'll see why in a minute. So in this current state, we are riding, we are not using our brakes, there is no pressure anywhere. Then you apply the brakes. So then this is gonna be the braking force. The pressure is gonna be pushed down the lines like this. And because it's a hydraulic fluid, it gives even pressure in all directions and all places. So you have to have these blocked off so it can't go anywhere else and it applies the pressure here. Then the sensor, which is on the wheel, is noting the, the speed that it's spinning. And if it notices it's about to lock or it's starting to lock, it says, mm, you don't want to be using that much braking force, buddy. Let's help you. Notice in this diagram, this is open. This is an isolation valve and this dump valve is closed. So this isolation valve here is gonna close and stop you adding any extra pressure to this system, but it has still got pressure in it. So let's draw that in. So it's blocked you adding any more pressure with your hand and it's kept it at the level that you had it at. So the wheel sensor is then gonna check about 10 times a second, is the wheel still locking or not? Uh, and if it is, then it's gonna to need to reduce the pressure on it even more. So what happens then is this here, this dump valve opens up and you can see this time where it was blocked here, it can now continue going into this space. Now no, that there is fluid in here the whole time, but it's not under the same pressure. So it's not like it's an air gap it's filling, it's just allowing it to get access more fluid up here. 
because there's this little um, low pressure reservoir, as it were, it's basically a hole with a disc and a spring in it. It allows pressure to go up inside here and lift this up. This also continues the pressure all the way around here. And you get down to the one way valve that that's not going to open because there's not enough pressure in the system to make that pop open. So again, at this point, your braking lever is doing nothing in this process. If you let go of it, it will realize you've let go of it and reset the system. But if you are still holding it, it's not adding any more pressure at this point because it wants to relieve pressure to stop it from locking up. So once it's relieved the pressure by putting some fluid up in here, it goes, ah, has the wheel stopped locking? Yes, it has. Okay, great. Well, I'd like to give braking force back to the person riding the bike. But the problem is, remember, that this is about a volumetric space. If you open this up here, this whole thing is a lot bigger than it used to be. You've got extra volume up here, which means your lever is going to sink to the grip. So it can't do that. So it needs to repressurize the line before it can allow you to get braking again. So the dump valve closes and at the same time a motor kicks in and it starts pushing a piston down a tube which pressurizes oil. It basically takes it from this loop which is under the pressure of this spring and then it forces it down inside this tube at a much higher pressure which will go through the one-way check valve and as you can see that's now adding pressure into the main brake line which is actually affecting your brakes. As it does that repeatedly, it will reduce the fluid in the reservoir to the point that this is empty, this is pressurized enough to, reduce, to release the isolation valve. And if we then switch back to page one, you will see we are now back to the state of you are under control braking and it's going to check to see if the wheel's going to lock. And it goes through those four steps 10 times a second roughly, something like that. I'm sure there's a lot of you who've watched this video who knew what ABS was, knew that it went in your hand, but didn't actually understand why it did that. Hopefully you do now, and if you did, leave a like on the video, I'd appreciate it. If you're still in question, I'm gonna run through this again in a much more simplified, fast version. You are braking, all of the force is going to the wheel. The ECU is checking the sensor on the wheel. It says, we're starting to lock up, that's not good. Stop him from pressing that brake anymore. And they close the isolation valve. Then it says, okay, are we good? Is it still locking? Uh, oh no, it's not. It's still gonna lock. Right, we need to dump pressure quick. Let's open the dump valve. Then the fluid goes through the whole system and it pressurizes the reservoir and it sits there and that's reduced the pressure now to a point that it should have stopped locking and it can start going back into the process of allowing you to brake again. But to do that, because of the extra volume that it's created, it needs to repressurize your line. So then it closes the dump valve, it uses the fluid in this reservoir, it pumps it down here through under higher pressure so it can pop through the one-way valve which repressurizes pre your brake line and gives you braking back at which point you are braking again. It then checks if you're not doing it right again we're going back into the cycle. Now as I say most people know this and you'll understand now why it does this but if you are on an ABS bike and you brake heavily and you feel the brake lever going did it did it in your hand or even under your foot if it's dual channel and it's got rear ABS do not let off if you relieve pressure you're going to stop braking you need to press as hard as you can it doesn't matter how hard you press after the ABS kick systems kicked in you are doing nothing absolutely nothing to the braking force and it's only when it says it's okay and you've removed your foot off the brake then it's going to reopen the system and it's not going to allow that wheel to lock up at any point. But as I say, the most important thing to know is if you've never ridden an ABS bike before or driven an ABS car, if you get an emergency, pull the brakes on and keep them on. Unless you need to maneuver and blah, 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 but if it's skidding, you need to keep them on and don't get scared off by the thumping through your hand, which I will say can actually be almost painful on some bikes if it's like a cold day and you really get on it and it goes You'll also hear it a little bit in the bike. As I say, if you did enjoy the video, please do leave a like. Check out my playlists. I have loads on mechanical stuff and bike rebuilds and all sorts of things. And I'm sure it'll be right up your street if you're trying to learn about stuff like this. Check out the videos I've linked. And if you want to help support this channel and help me bring more educational stuff to people about motorcycles to simplify what is quite a complicated system, then please consider help supporting me through Patreon. Links in the description. Benefits to that including getting on my Discord, getting videos early, and all sorts of things like that. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.